Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab. And what I got here is the Olympus OMD EM5 Mark II. It's a micro four thirds mirrorless camera. And it's pretty much direct competition to the Sony mirrorless cameras, which I normally review. The sensor in this one is a little smaller though. It's a micro four thirds. So it actually results in a two times crop factor. All right guys, so as you can see, the camera is very well made and it has the manual controls you know, all over the place, which, you know, advanced users are going to like. The dampening and feedback feels excellent on these controls. They're just right. This one's a little harder, and it has a lock knob here to keep it in place so you don't accidentally change the mode. I really like that feature. The articulating screen is nice, and it's high resolution. It comes out like that, and then you have to swivel it around, you know, in order to see it. And then you can close it and give you an armored, pretty nice design there. Note how you can easily grab it. Um, the only thing I don't like though is when you go to use the camera quickly, if you want to just do a quick, you know, hold it down low, you do have to take the screen out and then turn it in order to see what you're doing. Um, on the Sony design it just swivels out a little bit. So that's one thing I wanted to note. The lens release is on this side. Um, it has a flash port here and, you know, it's a really high quality camera. It's really like a pro quality design. Let me show you the sensor quick. I've already showed what it looks like. I'm outside now, so I'll be quick about it. That's the sensor, and that smaller sensor basically allows for the lenses to be smaller. So, for example, here's the other lens I have to work with, and it's a 75 to 300 millimeter lens. So, look at how small it is, considering that range. And then you factor in the, the smaller sensor, which makes the effective focal length of this lens 150 to 600 due to the two times crop factor. So basically I'm getting a 150 to 600 millimeter lens in this small package. So that's the advantage of using a system like this with a slightly smaller micro four thirds sensor. You know a full frame sensor is you know way bigger, twice the size if not more. So a lens, you know a 600 millimeter lens would be gigantic in comparison and much heavier. So with that being said, that's another like the main advantage that I could point out about the smaller sensor micro four thirds uh, mirrorless systems, like the Olympus, for example. Here, so moving on, let me show you what this thing can do in the real world. I'm obviously here on the Green Bridge, and I wanted to give you some sample video, sample photos, things like that. So, all right, yeah. So clearly, I got a cool scene to work with here, and. Uh, you know, I got a pretty nice camera as well. So I'm going to use both these lenses and see what I can do around the green bridge and the river scene here. So stay tuned, guys, and uh, should be a good time. All right. I got the 75 to 300 millimeter on here now. Pretty nice looking lens. I'm just going to lean on the railing for a little support. Let's see what I can get here. I see some ducks swimming over there. Some kind of duck or something. Oh, that one just came out of the water. That was cool. All right, guys, here's another video test. I'm at 600 millimeters, so obviously uh, you can expect a little bit of shake. Focus transitions are looking pretty smooth. Look at that. And we're looking at the river now. Trying to be as smooth as possible in hand holding. Alright, now I'm just going to zoom out here. Try to be as smooth as possible. Again, it's hard hand holding, you know. But anyway, there's some video. All right, guys, so here we are in Lightroom 5, and um, Lightroom 6 just came out, by the way. But anyway, here's that scene that was just behind me, and uh, I took this with the 25 millimeter lens, and, uh, you know, quite good. The JPEG engine does add a little bit of noise reduction. Here's the a shot of that bench I was sitting on just to show you, you know, how the bridge architecture renders. This was at f1.8. So here's another shot. This is at f5.6 first, and then I took another one at f1.8 just to show you what kind of separation you can get with a camera and lens like this. And here's another shot. 
This one is also at f1.8 and you can see just how sharp. It's very impressive detail retention there. All right, then I switched over to the 70 to 300 millimeter. Took a few shots. That lens isn't as sharp as the 25 millimeter, but it's pretty darn good. Um, at 300 millimeter, I find I don't get as many shots tack sharp as I would expect, but the hit rate's not bad overall. Like this one here, for example, it's just not 100% sharp. You can see it's just got like that little blur or something to it. The shutter speed was definitely fast enough, though. You know, considering the five-axis steady shot. But again, you know, it's a uh, equivalent to 600 millimeter. Here's another one, effective. So that's pretty much what I got on the green bridge. In the lab, I wanted to show you what this thing can do. In this case, I wanted to show you uh, the separation effect. And this is at pretty much minimum focus distance at f1.8 using a 25 millimeter lens. And here's f22. And here's just the regular lab scene. And this is a high ISO test, 25,000. And here's the 100% crop. So you can see the detail retention. It's pretty good. The 16 megapixel Next 6 is just slightly better. But, uh, you know, the pixel density is way less. And here's a super high res, the 40 megapixel shot. You have to have the camera on a tripod to do that. And it's pretty amazing. It takes like eight shots and it combines them all together and basically gives you a super high res image. And it works. So you could see here you know just how good it looks and how much resolution you actually get look at that it's really incredible and here's one with the minimum focus distance I just wanted to show you what the lights look like when they render bokeh out like that you can see it's nice and creamy pretty good not quite that full frame look but uh, looks pretty good nonetheless so next I just wanted to show you some around the house shots all right, guys, if you're used to watching my re video reviews, you probably recognize the Z scene that I like to use around the house here. It's just my deck railing, but it creates a nice depth perspective and, you know, gives a nice baseline, real world view of, you know, what the camera and lens is capable of. So, um, as you can see, it looks pretty good here and the air conditioner, you know, vents, things like that, the railing. Not bad, not bad. Here's uh, Bones Jones, and you can see this image looks great if you ask me. Color looks excellent, nice and bright, exposure, clarity. Let's take a look at, uh, we'll zoom in there so you can see some of the detail. And you can see it's extremely sharp on the nose. Missed the focus on that first one, but this one here, I, it hit the focus on the eye. Very well done. Here's a couple snapshots of my buddy Jace on the couch. You can see looks pretty good facial recognition works well and here's another shot outside I just I used to have a bird feeder hanging from this hook so this was at 300 millimeter 600 millimeter effective and there was a bird across the street it looked like some kind of woodpecker and it came out pretty good it's not quite as sharp as I would was hoping but it's you know really pretty darn good nonetheless and um, I took a couple we got these you know lawn ornament things and they're right down by the driveway and we're having you know a telephoto challenge on the forum so I figured I would try to take a couple telephoto shots and show off these uh, driveway lawn ornaments and I put the you know my car rim behind as a challenge to you know just show off the separation and whatnot and what I noticed particularly with the Olympus after using it for a while and talking to some friends on the forum the colors are quite good and you could see they just have like a, a, a nice pop to them. It definitely renders different than the Sony cameras. And the skin tones are fairly good. It depends on, you know, the reflections and things like that. In this case, Jace is on an orange extra saucer thing. So his face has some serious color influence due to that. But uh, the focus is what I was going for here. And I was just pretty much rapid firing and seeing how the focus would track as I moved around and as Jace moved around and it did a really good job so that's just you know some real world stuff I wanted to show you and here's another shot of Layla she's so cute playing with her little teeth thing and here's a shot my mom came up she was playing with Layla and stuff on the deck and then here's just a picture of the roof shingles kinda of thought that looked sorta of cool and here's my dad and Jace let me just zoom in on this so you can see some detail let's see it's pretty darn good you might wonder 
how good the five axis steady shot is. Um, this particular shot was taken on a tripod, but this one was handheld. This was a one second exposure. And it's not razor blade sharp, but for handheld, that was quite impressive. So I was just holding it as steady as I could and took a bunch of shots. This one came out really good. So one full second, I was able to handhold this exposure to get that effect. Now, just imagine what you can do with water and all sorts of other things. So the five axis steady shot works really well in that regard. Again, here's another shot taken handheld at night. Well, it's actually really early morning. I had to go into work and it was raining out. I was pretty happy with these results. Uh, it was ISO 1600, one fifth of a second, one sixth of a second. I just wanted to show you a couple more um, images from the real world here. And this is just the Pelton water wheel mechanism down the from near where I work. And uh, it offers a lot of detail and stuff like that to, um, you know, illustrate what this thing can do in the real world. So I'm just going through these quick as I'm talking. And you can see, um, you know, this is quite a capable camera system. And obviously I'm a big fan of Sony, but, uh, you know, Olympus has a really seriously good product here, without a doubt. And you can see this image just right off the camera. I mean, these are all JPEGs. Very good. I mean, the quality's there, the color's there, sharpness is there. So, you know, if you guys are shopping around and you want a system that has a lot more lenses to choose from, you might want to consider Olympus over Sony because Sony does not have near the amount of lenses that the Micro Four Thirds system uh, has to offer. So here's a few more shots down from the uh, this cool little stone bridge, and I was really happy with the image quality, especially this shot here. It had a lot of nice depth to it, and it just liked the way it rendered. Same thing here. Nice color, and this is pretty cool blue sign. I love these signs. They offer a lot of detail. You know, I'll zoom in here and show you. Nice little blob of bird poop there. Gotta love that. And I also thought this came out pretty good, this sign. I have pictures of uh, most of this stuff actually from years ago. Oh, I wanted to show you this. This is a, just a snapshot down the street from in Liberty. And here's an HDR version. The camera has an HDR button on the top, so I tried that and it does a great job. It takes multiple images at once, and here's what it exported. And this car was actually driving here, so it was able to sort that out as well with the multiple exposures, which was quite impressive. I was taking some video at uh, Layla's dance school, and I took a picture while recording some video, and you know, this it just kept it in the format of the video, so that's why the image is in this crop. And here's just a regular picture when I switched it back to aperture priority mode, and you can see the other guy was sitting on the floor just like I was and I was just playing around I turned the camera with the slower shutter to get this effect and it came out pretty cool just playing around you know here's my little buddy Layla she was so excited and she turned so quick you could see the blur and then she looked back again all right so I just recorded quickly on the deck here this silly little rabbit toy that spins around and I just slowed it down to 24p in Final Cut Pro X because I recorded at 60p so that you know allowed me a decent amount of frames to slow her down and I just wanted to show you that quick alright guys so the OMD EM5 Mark II goes for 1099 US and for that amount of money you really do get an unbelievable product it has you know advertised world's best 5-axis stabilization system which is equal to 5 EVs and you could see by that handheld one second shot that I had of the streaking taillights that that is true so impressive it's got cinema quality video and features to go with it and that is also true the video is great and it has a lot of options built-in Wi-Fi which is a must-have these days high-res everything including the OLED and the screen on the back which is also touch and fully articulating it's weatherproof and it has lots of weatherproof lenses to go with it the lens line is vast and deep you have tons of lenses to choose from in all sorts of quality and price points and that's one of the most powerful features of this Olympus Micro Four Thirds system. The live exposure mode is a great feature and you can actually watch images develop as you're taking them. I tried that with the taillights um, photos and it worked great. It was really cool to watch and you could see it, you know, exposed right in front of you. Very cool. 10 frames per second is the maximum shooting 
uh, burst mode, but it does not have tracking in between each shot. At 5 frames per second, it does have AF tracking, and it works very well. Not as good as the A6000, in my opinion. That has AF tracking at its fastest speed, and it works that being said, I was not using the best lenses that Olympus has. So if I had better lenses, my guess is this would perform just as good as the A6000 and hit rate would be, you know, pretty much as accurate as possible. So I'm using, you know, much more affordable lenses. So keep that in mind, please. Uh, one eight thousandth of a second max shutter speed is a nice feature, and this thing also has HDR live composite modes built in, IAF and face detection. They both work really well. Tried it on the kids in the real world. This camera also has an insane amount of art filters and effects. It has pro customization with all the different function buttons, and the menu is deep and vast pro style. You can go in there and check everything out, change, manipulate everything. Uh, it also has a cool quick access um, area. If you just hit the OK button in the center on the back, it'll bring you to a uh, quick menu where you can change all the settings that uh, are important, very similar to Sony's function menu. I really hope you guys got what you were looking for in this uh, OMD 5d mark ii review and you know thanks again for checking it out so if you have any questions please feel free to ask below and be sure to check out the full written review on my website because that's where all the high-res sample photos are and i break things down a little bit further because i try to keep these videos as short as possible not that many people stick around beyond five ten minutes so in any event uh, have a great day guys and thanks again for your support take care